Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nak and we are going to go over solving quadratic equations by the square root property. So let's first go with the square root property. Please memorize this. It says that if x squared equals to k, then x equals a plus or minus square root of k. I have to stress out on the minus part because a lot of students forget that portion. So basically this is what's going on. So suppose you have x squared equals to 4. Then and this property says that taking the square root on both sides then what we're going to get is x equals plus or minus square root of 4 which implies that x must be plus or minus 2. This makes sense because if I bring, let me just go over here so when x is 2, then this statement is true, isn't it? Because then we're going to have 2 squared, which is going to equal to 4. It checks. Now also, when x is negative 2, do you see that negative 2 squared equals to 4 as well? Therefore, this property does make sense. Okay, so let's do some examples. Example 1, solve x squared minus 50 equals to 0. So if we want to use the square root property, we need to deal with that 50 first. So first, let's bring that 50 on the right-hand side of the equation by adding 50 on both sides. Then what we get is x squared equals to positive 50. So now I think we're ready to apply this property, so let's do it. So if I have to write every step out, let me just rewrite this. So here, I'm going to apply the square root on both sides. But when I do that, our answer is going to be x equals plus or minus square root of 50. Now, we can't just stop there now since we know how to break down the radicals. So let's do it. 50 is 5 times 10. And 10 is 5 times 2, so we got 5 squared times 2. So here, what we're going to get is x equals plus or minus the square root of 5 squared times 2. Now I'm going to circle the perfect one. That's perfect. So that implies that our x is going to be plus or minus 5 square root of 2. So let's put this in the fancy uh, solution set notation. So therefore, our solution set is 5 square root of 2 and negative 5 square root of 2. And that's going to be the answer. Okay, let's jump into how to solve a quadratic equation using the square root property. So here are the steps. Step 1 isolate the quadratic term and make sure that its coefficient is 1. Step 2, use square root property. Step 3, simplify the radical. And step 4, check the solutions. Okay, but before we go over some more examples, I'm not quite sure if I explained what the heck is a quadratic equation is. Well, a quadratic equation, let me just write this out. Quad equation, that means quadratic equation, is an equation of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero. So I apologize if I did not uh, mention that earlier, but here it is. Now let's do some examples. Example two, solve 3z squared equals 108. Alright, so step number one, we need to isolate the quadratic term and make sure that its coefficient is 1. So in this case, we must divide both sides by 3. Then what we're going to get is z squared equals 108 divided by 3. So what the heck is that? 36. Alright, now we are ready to apply the square root property. So let's do it. So this implies that our z is going to be plus or minus the square root of 36, which implies that z equals to plus or minus 6. 
So our proposed solutions are z equals to 6 or z equals to negative 6. Okay, we cannot just relax yet. We need still need to check our solutions. So let's check when z equals to 6. I'm going to plug that into the uh, given equation. We're going to get 3 times 6 squared. I'm going to have to ask, is that going to equal to 108? All right, now let's check. Now that square is only attached on the six, not on the three. So here, what we're gonna get is three times six squared is 36. Now, let me just keep doing this portion. So what's three times 36? I believe it's 108, which checks up with the right-hand side. So therefore, z equals to 6 is a solution to this quadratic equation. Now let's check. z equals to negative 6. Okay, we're going to do the same thing. So here we're going to go, it does 3 times negative 6 squared. Is that going to equal to 108? Alright, so let's do it. So again, that squared is only attached on the negative 6. So here what we're going to get is 3 times negative 6 squared, which is a positive 36, which gives us 108 again. Oh, why did I write 180? Sorry about that. And it checks with that right-hand side. Okay, so our proposed solutions are actual solutions. So therefore, our solution set is 6 and negative 6. And that's our answer. Okay, now let's try this one. Solve x squared plus 72 equals to 0. All right, so step 1, we need to isolate the x squared. So we need to subtract 72 from both sides first. So then what we're going to get is x squared equals to negative 72. Now, can you tell what kind of solutions that we're going to get? Yes, imaginary solutions because look, the statement says that if I square a number, it's going to equal to negative value. So keep that in mind and let's do it. So if I apply the square root property, uh, in my head, I'm already applying the square root on both sides. So here, we're going to get x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 72. Now remember the property here. Let me see. Square root of negative 1 became an i. So we're going to use that here to get x equals plus or minus square root of 72 times the i. Now we simplify. So let me just break down the 72. It's even, so 2 is going to go in. 2 times 36, and then 6 times 6. So this is 6 squared, multiplying here by 2. Alright, so now I'm going to rewrite this as, let me just move towards the left-hand side a little bit, x equals plus or minus the square root of 6 squared times 2, multiplying here by the i. Now, 6 squared is perfect, so I'm going to circle that one. So, this implies that we're going to have x equals plus or minus 6 times the square root of 2 times the i. So here, our proposed solutions are x equals to 6 square root of 2i, or x equals negative 6 square root of 2i. Now, we must check our proposed solutions. So, let's check. Let's first go with the positive uh, 6 square root of 2i. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to plug that into the given equation. So here, what we're going to get is 6 square root of 2i squared plus 72. The question is, is that going to equal to 0? So this is what you need to check. All right, we got this. So let's simplify the left-hand side. So 6 square root of 2i whole quantity squared. Remember this property. Let me just write it out here. If I have a, b to the n, this is a to the n, and then b to the n. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute that exponent to each term. So we're going to get 6 squared 
times the square root of 2 squared times i squared. Okay, so then here we're going to get 36. Now, square root of 2 squared just becomes 2. Now, remember what i squared equal to? i squared is negative 1. So I'm going to rewrite this guy as negative 1. Okay, so now what do we get? 36 times 2. What is that? Is that a 72? So here what we're going to get is negative 72. Oops, I forgot to drop down this plus 72. Sorry about that. 72 plus 72 and plus 72. So is it going to equal to 0? Yes, it does. So therefore, we're going to keep 6 root 2i as a solution to this quadratic equation. Now, let's check the negative side. Alright, we're going to do the same thing. This time, I'm not going to forget to drop down that 72. Alright, so here is negative 6 square root of 2i squared plus 72. The question is, is that going to equal to 0? All right, so let's do it. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to distribute that exponent 2 to each term. And then drop down the 72. There you go. All right, then what we're going to get is 36 times 2 times negative 1, and then plus 72. So again, I think this is going to work. Negative 72 plus the 72, it's going to equal to 0. So we get to keep both solutions. So here, our solution set is 6 square root of 2i and negative 6 square root of 2i. And here is our answer. All right, now let's try something like this. Solve 2 over 3x squared plus 5 equals to 17. Do not freak out just because you see that fraction 2 thirds. We got this. All right, so ready? So first, we need to isolate the x squared on the one side. I'm just going to keep it on the left-hand side. So that means that first, I need to get rid of this 5 by subtracting by 5. Then, we're going to get 2 thirds x squared equals to 12. All right, so now, what we need to do is we need to get rid of that 2 thirds. Yeah, you can divide it by 2 thirds, but then do you see that we're going to have to deal with more fractions, right? So the trick is this. I don't know if you remember this trick. If you want to make the coefficient on the x squared equals to 1, just multiply the reciprocal of 2 thirds on both sides. What I mean is, who's the reciprocal of 2 thirds? That will be what? 3 over 2? So here I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 over 2. So now what's going to happen? 3 over 2 multiplying here by 2 over 3, that's just going to become 1. So next step, what we're left with is just x squared equals to 12 times 3 over 2. And we always have to simplify. Let's just take care of it right now. 2 goes into 2 uh, once, and 2 goes in, into 12 six times. So it looks like what we're going to get is x squared equals to 6 times 3, which is 18. All right, I think now we're ready to apply the square root property. So I'm going to apply the square root in my head already. Then here what we're going to get is x equals plus or minus the square root of 18. Now I'm going to break down the 18. 2 times 9 and then 3 times 3. So 18 is 3 squared times 3. So let's keep going. So our x looks like plus or minus the square root of 3 squared times the 2. All right, now this one is perfect squared. So we're going to get x equals plus or minus 3 square root of 2. So it looks like our proposed solutions are x equals 3 square root of 2 and x equals negative 3 square root of 2. All right, now we must check. Okay, so let's first go with the positive side. So when x equals 3 square root of 2, let's plug this back into the original equation. Then we're going to get 2 thirds 
times 3 square root of 2 squared plus 5. Is that going to equal to 17? All right, so we got a little work to do. So let's work on the left-hand side of the equation. So we have 2 thirds times 3 squared times the square root of 2 squared and then plus 5. And here this is 2 thirds times the 9 times the 2 and then plus 5. So remember, 9 is the same thing as 9 over 1, and then 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. So I think I could simplify here. 3 goes into 3 once, and then into 9 3 times. So I know it looks really ugly, so let me just rewrite. So that means that who's left over. We got 2 times 3 times 2, and then plus the 5. All right, so what do we get? So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 uh, times 3 is 12. So we get 12 plus 5, which is 17. Does it equal to the right-hand side 17? Yep. So 3 root 2 is going to be our solution. All right, now we're going to check the negative 3 root 2. Um, I don't want to be running out of room, so let me just work on the right-hand side here. So when x equals negative 3 square root of 2, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug that into the original quadratic equation. So we get 2 thirds times negative 3 root 2 squared plus 5. Is that going to equal to 17? I think it does because look, we're going to get 2 thirds times negative 3 squared times the square root of squared plus 5. And then basically we're going to get the same thing because negative 3 whole quantity squared will give us positive 9. But you know me, I don't like to skip any steps. So we got 2 thirds times positive 9 and then square root of 2 squared just gives us just a 2 and then plus the 5. Again, 9 is the same thing as 9 over 1 and 2 same thing as 2 over 1. So we could just reduce this a little bit. So again, we're going to have 2 times 3 times 2 and then plus the 5, which is going to give us 12 plus 5 and it's going to add up to 17. All right, so guess what? We get to keep both answers as our solution set. So here our solution set is 3 square root of 2 and negative 3 square root of 2. And that's our answer. Let's try this one, something very um, similar to the last example, but what I want you to do is pause the video and try this problem on your own. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with adding three on both sides. Then you're gonna get three over four y squared equals to 21. All right, now how do I get rid of that 3 fourth? Multiplying by its reciprocal, which is 4 thirds. Then the left hand side just becomes y squared. And then I'm just going to simplify this a little bit. 3 goes into 3 once and then into 21 7 times. So what we're left with is a 7 times 4, which is 28. All right. Now let's apply the square root property. Then here what we're going to get is y equals 2 plus or minus square root of 28. Now break it down. All right, so 28, 2 times 14, 2 times 7. So it looks like it's going to be 2 squared times 7. So what we're going to get is plus or minus the square root of 2 squared times 7. Circle the perfect one. Then, looks like y equals 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 7. So, our proposed solutions are 2 root 7, that's a 7. That's the most wonky looking 7. I'm just going to leave it like that though. <laughs> y equals 2 negative 2 square root of 7. Alright, so now let's check. Let's go with the positive sides first. 
All right, so I'm going to plug this in, into the original equation. And the question is, does this whole thing then equal to 18? All right, we got this, so let's do it. So 3 over 4, and here you're going to have 2 squared times the square root of 7 squared minus 3. I'm just working the left-hand side of the equation. So you get 3 over 4 times 2 squared is 4, and the square root of 7 squared is just 7, and then minus 3. So I think we can cancel these 4s because, remember, 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1, and so 7 is 7 over 1. Kill the 4, kill the 4. All right, so what do we got left over here? We have 3 times 7, 21, minus 3. What is that? That's 18. That's exactly what we're looking for. So we're going to keep 2 root 7 as part of our solution. Now let's go with the negative side. All right, sorry, that's my fridge. All right, so now let's go with 3 over 4 times negative 2 root 7 squared minus 3. Is it going to equal to 18? I think it will because if I square the negative 2 root 7, we're going to get the same expression as above. But let's just do this. So here you're going to have negative 2 squared root 7 squared minus 3. So 3 over 4 times 4 times 7 minus 3. So do you see that we're going to get the same thing? So kill the 4s and then you're going to get 21 minus 3. So it checks. Oops, sorry, is 18 equals to 18. All right, cool. So therefore, our solution set is 2 root 7 and then negative 2 root 7. And at least this is what I got for the answer to this problem. How did you guys do on this one? I'm hoping that you guys are kind of getting hang of it. So let's take a look at something a little bit more complicated looking. Example 6. Solve 4 times the quantity y minus 7 squared equals 248. It looks a little bit different than all the previous examples, so I figure we try this together. So step number 1. Get rid of that 4. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 first. Then we're going to have y minus 7 squared, whole quantity squared, equals to 48 uh, divided by 4, so that will be... 12. Now let's take a look at this one. Notice that this is of the form u squared equals to 12, where u is this whole y minus 7. So from here, we can directly apply the square root property because look, if u squared equals to 12, applying the square root on both sides, then u is going to be plus or minus the square root of 12. So treat y minus 7 as u. So if I take the square root on both sides, then what we're going to get is y minus 7 equals to plus or minus the square root of 12. Now we're going to break down the 12. So 12 is 2 squared times 3. Then we're going to get y minus 7 equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 2 squared multiplying here by 3. So let's just keep doing it the same way. What we're going to get now is y minus 7 equals plus or minus 2 times the square root of 3. All right, let's pause here a minute. Are we done? No, because we still have to solve for y. So what we need to do is add 7 to both sides. Now, if I were you, yes, you, of course, you can add 7 after the plus or minus 2 root 3. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to add the 7 in front of that plus and minus. You'll see why later on. So here, I'm going to go plus 7, and I'm just going to squeeze in plus 7 right in front of the plus or minus. Then, here, what we're going to get is y equals 7 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. So our proposed solutions are 
7 plus 2 square root of 3 or y equals to 7 minus 2 square root of 3. All right, now we check. Let's do the positive side first. All right, so I'm going to do is plug this back into the original equation. So here, let's see, we're going to get 4 times y minus 7. So y is 7 plus 2 root 3, and you're going to have to go minus 7 squared. So the question is, is that going to equal to 48? All right, we got this. So let's work on this side. So here, order of operation does matter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work what's in the parentheses first. So here, I'm going to have 4 times. Now, 7 minus 7, that's going to cancel out. So you're going to have 2 square root of 3 squared, which gives us 4 times 2 squared, square root of 3 squared, which is 4 times 4 times 3. Which, has, which gives us what? 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. And it checks. So 7 plus 2 square root of 3 is a keeper. All right, now let's go with the negative side. y equals 7 minus 2 square root of 3. All right, we're going to do the same thing. So 4 times... 7 minus 2 root 3 minus 7 whole thing squared is that gonna equal to 48 all right so we're gonna have 4 times again 7 minus 7 it's gonna become a 0 then you have negative 2 root 3 squared all right then this portion becomes 4 times negative 2 squared times the root 3 squared so it's going to turn out to be the same thing as above. So we're going to have 4 times 4 times 3. So again, uh, 3 times 4 is 12. 12 times 4 is 48. So we get 48 equals to 48. All right, so that means that we get to keep both of them as our solution set. So let me just write down the answer right here. So therefore, the solution set is 7 plus 2 root 3, and then 7 minus 2 root 3. And that's going to be our answer. All right, I'm going to bring on the fractions. So solve quantity x minus 1 third squared equals 2, 5 over 9. We got this. So again, do you see that this is of the form u squared equals to 5 over 9? So if I apply the square root property, then you're going to have u equals to plus or minus 5 over 9. Now pretend your u is this whole quantity, x minus the 1 third. So let's do it. I'm going to apply the square root of property to get 1 minus 1 third equals to plus or minus the square root of 5 over 9. Now again, remember this property. So if I have a square root of a over b, that was square root of a over the square root of b. So I'm going to apply that to get x minus 1 third equals 2 plus or minus root 5 over square root of 9, which is 3. So now we add the 1 third to both sides. And again, I'm going to add 1 third on, uh, right before plus or minus. So here you're going to have x equals 1 third plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3. All right, so by the way, this expression is exactly the same thing as 3 on the bottom with 1 plus or minus the square root of 5, by the way. I just wanted to let you know that because, look, you guys all remember that if we were given a plus or minus b over c, that was a over c plus or minus the b over c. So those two uh, expressions are equivalent. But anyways, I'm going to write down our proposed solution. So our proposed solutions are x equals to 1 third plus square root of 5 over 3 and x equals to 1 third minus square root of 5 over 3. All right, check-in time. Okay, so we got this. So we check, let's go with 1 third plus, so when this is x equals 1 third plus 
square root of 5 over 3. Okay, so we're going to plug this into our um, original equation to get parentheses x minus one third, but our x is one third plus root five over three, that's our x, and then minus one third squared. So the question is, is that gonna equal to five over nine? Okay, so we got this, it's not as bad as you think, so let's work on the left hand side. Notice that one third is gonna cancel each other out and we are just left with root five over three whole quantity squared which is same thing as root five squared over three squared. So it gives us five over nine, which checks with the right-hand side. So x equals to one third plus root five over three is a keeper. Now let's go with x equals one third minus square root of five over three. All right, we're gonna do the same thing. 1 third minus square root of 5 over 3, so that's our x, and then minus the 1 third squared. Is that going to equal to 5 over 9? All right, so again, 1 third is going to cancel each other out, so what we're left with is negative root 5 over 3 squared. Now, remember, if I square the negative, you're going to get a positive. So here, this is the same thing as negative root five squared over three squared, which is again, you're gonna have five over nine. All right, so one third minus five over three is also a keeper. So therefore, our solution set is one third plus root five over three, and that's a comma, one third minus root five over three. So. That's gonna be our answer. Now let's look at a problem like this. Solve quantity two x minus three squared equals to negative 12. So here, we're gonna do the same thing. So again, we're gonna apply the square root property to get two x minus three equals to plus or minus the square root of negative 12. So do you see that we're gonna get an imaginary solution here? All right, we got this. So next step, what I'm going to do is let's just simplify the uh, square root of negative 12. That's exactly the same thing as, uh, where can I write this? Uh, I'll just write every step out, here we go. Plus or minus the square root of 12 times the i. All right, now let me just break down the 12 right now. So 12 is uh, 2 times 6, 2 times 3, 2 squared times 3. So here, you get 2x minus 3 equals to plus or minus the square root of 2 squared times 3 and the i. So I'm going to circle the perfect one to get 2x minus 3 equals to plus or minus 2 root 3 times the i. Okay. So the next step is this. In order to solve for x, we need to get rid of that 3. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 3 on both sides. And we're going to get 2x equals 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 3i. All right, now how do I solve for x? Well, we should divide it by 2, correct? So what I'm going to do is this. Yes, you can... If you're gonna divide it by two on the left-hand side, you're gonna to have to divide the whole thing by two, correct? Okay, but the thing is, remember, if you have a plus or minus b over c, this is a over c plus or minus the b over c. So what I'm trying to say is that this is gonna become x equals to three over two plus or minus two root three i all over two. Now, if I simplify that, we're gonna get three over two and plus or minus, now remember, I could cancel out those two to get square root of three i. Okay, so it looks like our proposed solutions are x equals to three over two plus root three i, or x equals to three over two minus root three i. All right, now we check. Let's take the positive side first. All 
Okay, so now what we're going to do is plug that into our original equation. So you're going to have 2 times x. So here I'm going to have, let me just make the parentheses a little bit bigger, 2 times x, well our x is 3 over 2 plus the square root of 3i. And then, oh, minus 3. Whole thing squared. Question is, is that going to equal to negative 12? All right, so let's keep working. So I'm going to work on the left-hand side here. So first, uh, what I'm going to do is distribute this 2 to each term, just like that. So we're going to have 2 times 3 over 2. So do you notice that 2 is going to cancel? So what we are left with is just a 3. And then plus, if I distribute the 2 to square root of 3i, we're going to get 2 square root of 3i. And then we have minus 3, whole thing squared. So now let's take a look at this. 3 and a 3 is going to cancel each other out, right? 3 minus 3. So we get 2 square root of 3i, whole thing squared. So this is same thing as 2 squared, root 3 squared, and then i squared, which gives us 4 times 3. And then again, i squared is, yep, negative 1. So we're going to get negative 12, which matches up with the right hand side. So this solution 3 over 2 plus root 3i is a keeper. It's going to be our solution. Now let's go with x equals to 3 over 2 minus the square root of 3i. Okay, so now we go do the same thing. So we got 2 times 3 over 2 minus square root of 3i minus 3 squared is that going to equal to negative 12 all right so i'm going to follow the same procedure as as what we did just above distributing the two what we're going to get oops you're going to have all right two times three over two is just a three minus two root three i and then minus three whole thing squared so again, 3 minus 3 becomes the 0, and then we get negative 2 root 3i squared, which is the same thing as negative 2 whole thing squared, root 3 squared, and then i squared. I'm running out of room. All right, so then here what we're going to get is 4 times 3, and then i squared is again, it's negative 1, so we're going to have negative 12. All right, so therefore, we keep both of them as part of our solution set. So the solution set is 3 over 2 plus the square root of 3i, and then 3 over 2 minus the square root of 3i. And that's going to be our answer. I know it looks pretty nasty, but that's okay. We just did it. Okay, next example, let's take a look at something that looks completely different than before. So we got solve 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 equals 216. You're like, what the heck? All right, so since we need to apply the square root property, what we need to do is we're going to have to make the left-hand side of the expression into something whole quantity squared. Okay, so guess what we need to do? Yes, factor time. So let's get to work. I'm not quite sure which way you learned how to factor, but um, here is one way to do it. So I'm going to call it a side work. So we're going to factor 4n squared plus 4n plus 1. So if you like to use that diamond method, diamond is something that looks going to look like this. You're going to have a times c. This is A, B, and then C. And then the bottom becomes the B. So A times C is just 4 times 1, which is 4. And B is positive 4 as well. So what we need to do is we need to come up with two numbers such that if I multiply these two numbers, it's going to multiply to 4. 
and at the same time it's gonna add to 4 so so let me just write it so from if I multiply these two guys then so this is the multiplication part it, it better multiply to 4 and then if you take this two numbers and then if you add them together you better get the value 4 so can you think of any number I think it's 2 and a 2 does it work so I'm gonna write it as 2 and a 2 I hope you can see that so if I multiply 2 times 2 is it gonna equal to 4 yes and then if I add 2 plus 2 that's a multiplication sign is it gonna add up to 4 yes so what this means that our 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 now becomes 4n squared plus 2n and then another plus 2n because the sign on the 2 is positive, correct? And then we're going to have plus 1. So this is called a factor by grouping. Now notice that this new expression is exactly what we're given because look we have a 4n squared and then plus 2n plus 2n will give us 4n squared and then plus 1 so they're equivalent so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna group up the first two we're gonna do the factor by grouping and then group up the last two and the, get the greatest common factor out of there so what's the GCF of 4n squared and then 2n? Well, GCF is 2n. All right, so now I'm going to rewrite this as, all right, so 2n times what is going to give us 4n squared? Well, that's another 2n, isn't it? And then 2n times what gives me 2n? That will be 1. And then here you're going to have plus. Well, let's look at 2n plus 1. Is there any GCF? No, so just leave it alone. And then here I'm going to write it as 2n plus 1. Okay, so now let's take a look at these two terms. And then what do they have it in common? Yes, 2n plus 1. So I'm going to factor the 2n plus 1. And I'm going to rewrite the rest of it as 2n and then plus dun dun dun. All right, don't forget there is that invisible one sitting there. So the rest of it is 2n plus 1, which gives us 2n plus 1 whole quantity squared. Okay, so that was just our side work. Now let's rewrite this. So therefore, 4n squared plus 4n plus 1 becomes, so let me just bring it over here, same thing as 2n plus 1 whole quantity squared equals to 16. Now, we're going to apply the square root property to get 2n plus 1 equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 16, which is 2n plus 1 equals 2 plus or minus 4. And now, we're going to subtract 1 from both sides to get 2n equals 2, negative 1, and then plus or minus 4. Then, I'm going to divide by 2. So let me just divide each term by 2 now. So here what we're going to get is n equals negative 1 half plus or minus 4 over 2, which is just 2. Now let's separate them. So our proposed solutions are n equals to negative 1 half plus 2. So we got some work to do. We need to put this in the common denominator. Common denominator is 2. And then if I have to rewrite uh, 2 with the denominator of 2, I need a 4 up in here. So this is going to give us 3 over 2. So n equals to 3 over 2 is one of our proposed solution. Now let's go with the negative side. n equals negative 1 half minus 2 which is same thing as negative 1 half minus 4 over 2. So which is going to give us, remember, you got negative 1 minus 4 is same thing as negative 1 plus negative 4, which is negative 5 over 2. 
So our other proposed solution is negative 5 over 2. Now we check. Let's take, oops, not x, n, whoa, n equals to 3 over 2 first. Okay, again, we're going to plug this into our original equation to get 4 times 3 over 2 squared plus 4 times 3 over 2 plus 1. Is that going to equal 216? All right, we're going to work on the left-hand side of this equation. So here, what we're going to get is 4 times. So here, 3 squared is going to give us 9, and then 2 squared gives us 4. And then plus... Now, before I multiply everything through, 4 is the same thing as 4 over 1, right? So, 2 goes into 2 once, into 4 twice. So, what do we got left over? 2 times 3, which is 6, and then plus 1. Alright, so now I could cancel these 4 out. Then we're going to have 9 plus 6 plus 1. So, what is that? Is that going to give us 9 plus 6 and then plus 1? The same thing as 9 plus 7, which gives us 16. Yay! All right, so 3 over 2, we keep that as a part of the solution set. Now let's go with the n equals to negative 5 over 2. All right, we're going to do the same thing. So... That's 4 times negative 5 over 2 squared plus 4 times negative 5 over 2 plus 1. Is that going to equal to 16? All right, let's work on this side. So we have 4 times negative 5 whole quantity squared gives us positive 25. And 2 squared is 4. And then plus... Now, again, I'm going to simplify this before I multiply everything through. 2 goes into 2 once, into 4 twice. So what we have is, who's left over? This portion is going to be minus 10 because you have a minus 5 and then times the 2. So minus 10 and then plus 1. So then this is going to be, 4 is going to cancel. 25 and then minus 10 plus 1 which is going to give us 15 plus 1, which is 16, which matches, matches up with the right-hand side. So, therefore, our solution set is 3 over 2 and negative 5 over 2. So, this is going to be the answer. All right, so example 10, let's look at something like solving 16x squared plus 40x plus 25 equals to 4. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to make the right-hand side equal to 0. So how do I do that is, yes, subtract 4 first. Then let's rewrite. We got 16x squared plus 40x. And then now we got plus 21 equals to 0. Okay, so now let's stare at that up for a little bit. Do they have any common factor? Nope, I don't think so. So now we factor this. So let's take this as a side work. And we're going to factor 16x squared plus 40x and then plus 21. Okay, so if I use that... AC and then B method. So again, 16 is A, 40 is B, positive 21 is C. So A times C, which is 16 times 21, that's 336. And then our B is 40. So what we need to do is this. We need to come up with the two numbers such that if you multiply them, you're going to get 336. But if you add those two numbers, it better add up to 40. So let's think about this a little bit. Now, the, uh, if I multiply the two numbers, it has to be positive 336. So either your choices are plus plus or negative negative. I'm talking about the sign on the side numbers. But the thing is, it needs to add up to positive 40. So do you see that our sign must be positive and then positive to begin with? 
All right, so now keep that in mind then. Ugh, let's do this. So whatever the number that you're gonna come up to, these two side numbers must do multiply to 336. And then these side numbers, if I add them, it better add up to 40. Oh man, we got a lot of work to do, but we got this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is this. Let's take 336 and then let's try to come up with two numbers that's gonna multiply to 336. So I'm gonna take that over here. So first of all, 336 is one times 336. But if I add one plus 336, is it gonna add up to 40? No, so this choice is out. Now does two go in? Yep, two times 168. All right, that's also 336, but is it gonna add up to 40? Oh, heck no. So now let's go with, what's the next one? Three, three times 112. That's also 336, but mm -mm, it's not gonna add to 40. <sighs> okay, we don't give up, we got this. Next, is four go in? Yeah, so four times 84. All right, is that gonna add up to 40? Nope. <sighs> All right, five is not gonna go into 336. And then what about six? I think so. Six times, what is that, 56? Okay, now that's, if I multiply, that's gonna be 336. But if I add those two numbers, uh, definitely not 40. Okay, we move on. So does seven go in? I think so, seven times, what is that, 48? Is also 336, but nope, it's not gonna add to 40. Oh my gosh. Okay, next one is what? 8? Eight? 8 going to 336, 42 times? Add. Nope. If I add them, that's not 40. Okay, 9. Is 9 going to go into 336 nicely? Nope. 10? Nope, it's not going to go in. 11? No. 12. Yeah, 12 goes into 336. So, 336 divided by 12 is 28. So if I add those two numbers, is it gonna, oh my gosh, look at, whoa, we got this. So if I add these two numbers, do you see that we're gonna have 40? Yes, so we got those two side numbers now. So our side numbers are 12 and then positive 28. Now it does not matter if you put the 12 first or the second your final answer will be exactly the same. So let me just keep going in this order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite 16x squared plus 40x plus 21 as 16x squared. So here what you're basically doing is you're rewriting positive 40x by using those two side numbers. So this is gonna be plus 12x and then plus 28x because look if I add those two we get 40x back and then we're gonna drop down that plus 21 all right from here it's factor by grouping group up the first two and then group up the last two and we're gonna have to get the greatest common factor out of there all right so let's first look at 16x squared and 12x what's the greatest common factor I think it's 4x Okay, so 4x times what is going to give us 16x squared? Well, that's another 4x. Next sign better be plus. And then 4x times what is going to give us 12x? That would be 3. Okay, now I'm going to drop down this plus sign. Don't forget to do that. And now let's look at 28x and then 21. What is the greatest common factor? I think it's 7. Does 7 go in? Yep, it does. Now, seven times what is gonna give us a 28x? 4x. Seven times 4x gives us 28x, and then seven times what is gonna give us 21? That will be three. Looking good. So now we have these two terms. Now, what do they have it in common? 4x plus three. So factor the 4x plus three out of there. And let's uh, the rest of it is another 4x plus 7. So we're going to get 4x plus 3 whole quantity squared. All right, so that was a job and a half right there, but now we're ready to do this. 
So I'm going to take this, I'm gonna start working on this one. So we just discovered that 16x squared plus 40x plus 21 is nothing but 4x plus three whole quantity squared. So we're gonna set that equal to zero. Okay, now we're ready to apply the square root property. So if I apply the square root property, we're gonna have 4x plus three equals two plus or minus the square root of zero. Well, what's the square root of zero? It's zero, so positive zero is just zero and negative zero is just a zero. So we're gonna get 4x plus three equals to zero. Now, I think from here, we're good to go. So you're gonna have minus three, minus three. Then you're gonna have 4x equals two, minus three, dividing by four. Then we're gonna have x equals two, negative three over four. So we're gonna get just one proposed solution for this particular problem because of that zero. All right, so now we check. Oh man, I'm gonna have to plug that in to that equation. All right, we can do this. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm whining right now. All right, so you got 16 times negative three over four, whole thing squared, plus 40 times negative three over four, and then plus 21, the question is, is that gonna equal to zero? All right, we got this, so let's check it. All right, so we got 16. Now, if I square negative three whole quantity squared is nine, and then four squared is 16, so we're gonna have positive nine over 16 there. And then, before I multiply, let me simplify this. Four goes into four once, into 40 10 times. So here, uh, our sign is minus now, so you got minus 10 times three, which is 30, and then plus 21. All right. So 16 is going to cancel out. Then what we have left over is 9 minus 30 and then plus 21. Now 9 minus 30 is minus 21 and then plus 21. Woohoo! It goes to 0, which matches up with the right hand side. So therefore, our solution set is just negative three over four. So that's gonna be our answer. That was a problem and a half. Oh my goodness, I think it was because of the factoring. So I'm going to um, warn you ahead of time that this chapter, you must know how to factor. But anyways, I'm going to stop here. If there is any questions, please let me know and great job everyone and I'll talk to you soon, bye.